The Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129 presents Sounds from the Spires with Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, Music Director of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Hello and welcome to Sounds from the Spires. This is Dr. Jennifer Pasquale and you're listening to The Catholic Channel on Sirius XM 129. And today we're going to have a very special guest on from Boston. He's a veteran. He's been with us a number of times, but a, a dear friend. And um, we're in ordinary time now. We just celebrated uh, the presentation of the Lord or purification or Candlemas, whatever you decide to uh, call it. Um, we are uh, obviously in ordinary time right now where things are just kind of uh, at a at a slower pace between Christmas and Lent, uh, which is a good thing for everybody, um, not just in the liturgical world, but um, and not just musicians and clergy, but um, we all get a chance to regroup, spring cleaning, all that kind of thing. And so it's a good thing. But I always have a great time catching up with uh, fellow musicians from around the the country and around the world, really, uh, and some really great uh, colleagues, fantastic friends, and um, who are also great musicians. And um, Sounds from the Spires has been a great way to reconnect or continue uh, collaborating and talking with um, and catching up with and seeing where people's careers are and um, when people are on the show for a number of times um, you get to kind of see their journey and where they were before and where they are now and so our guest today is one of those folks um, we'll get him in on a second but uh, uh, he was um, he's now at the uh, uh, cathedral in Boston, the Holy Cross Cathedral, Richard Clark, and so he's uh, just a fabulous musician, friend, composer, organist, uh, collaborator, uh, you name it. And uh, one of the things that we have here in the United States is the Conference of Roman Catholic Cathedral Musicians, and there's no other group like it because you go to these bigger things like the American Guild of Organists or National Association of Pastoral Musicians, you kind of almost feel like you get lost in the sea of people. Not really lost, but there's so many people and there's only so many things you can do. You can't do everything or else you just burn out by the end of the conference. But um, the CRCCM, Conference of Roman Catholic Cathedral Musicians, is a great way for um, th th those of us, 40 to 60 people at each conference get together and um, from all around the United States and Canada and sometimes New Zealand, sometimes other countries, periodically people come. And we just connect with each other, share ideas, um, commiserate, if you will, and um, share music. And it's just a really great intimate group of people that we nobody does what we do at the level that we do it at the cathedral. And so it's just a, a nice intimate group for all of us to 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 lean on each other to 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 cry to laugh and and share our ideas so we have with us today richard clark who i mentioned is a veteran of this show and so we welcome him again richard how are you doing fine thank you good to good to hear your voice you too i just saw you recently you were playing at our house here <laughs> oh yeah i i was uh, i think i was spotted there for a little bit one sunday afternoon yes and uh, thank you for having me uh, again to to perform on your wonderful Kilgan organs, but both instruments. And uh, uh, it was fun bringing about 25 friends with me, new and old, to sing in Escola. Some brand new friends <laughs> I just right. met that day, and some folks from Boston, <laughs> and some singers from New York. And said, hey, let's sing some Gregorian chant, because I have some organ music based on Gregorian chant. And uh, they did a beautiful job coming together, yeah. sounding like one voice. So, uh, And the fact that you guys let me do these fun things in your beautiful house is... Uh, I'm very grateful. No, it's a lot of fun. And again, Richard Clark is the music director and organist at Holy Cross Cathedral in Boston. And um, how long have you been there now, Richard? I've been there since September of of 2018, so uh, not quite even a year and a half. Yeah. And it's been a period of transition. Uh, I came in in the last several months of what was nearly a two-year renovation. Uh -huh. And so we were you know, downstairs in a, in a smaller chapel. Uh, you know, through Christmas, through, you know, we were operating as as usual, but not in the usual space. And then uh, we opened up the main cathedral again on Palm Sunday of 2019. So uh, that was uh, an awful lot went into that. <laughs> yeah, 
that's a busy start for for anybody. But I mean, at a cathedral uh, of a major city, that's that's a lot of. Uh... Yeah, there's a, a lot of attention, a lot of eyes on it. But it was exciting too, and and I'm actually grateful that I was able to start a little before while we were still downstairs, a little under the radar, kind of get mm-hmm. things developed and get things going. But uh, the fun part about it, I say fun, everything's fun, uh, is as if Holy Week isn't busy enough, particularly at a cathedral. You know, the cathedrals have the chrism mass, uh, which is in addition to everything else that that it's the only mass of its kind in any diocese right. where all the holy oils are are consecrated. You have that on Tuesday. You have Tenebrae. Then you have the Triduum. Uh, we had the minor detail that we had a brand new altar that needed dedicating. <laughs> so, <laughs> by the way, we're opening Palm Sunday to the public, but can you dedicate the organ? Uh, excuse me, dedicate the altar the day before, and that and uh, that's a beautiful ceremony. It's just a beautiful mass to do that beautiful ritual. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, we're fortunate to do that. The entire sanctuary was um, completely re uh, reframed, and the altar ambo and um, and the baptismal font were all built to match the reredos in uh, from 1875. So you look at them, they all match beautifully, and they're 140, 445 years apart from yeah. each other. Fantastic. So, yeah, we had to dedicate that on Saturday morning, and then we did Palm Sunday and, <laughs> and Holy Week, and it was quite a quite a fantastic start. <laughs> now that you've been through all this, Richard, is yeah. are things just a little bit slower, maybe? No. Uh, slower is a relative term. Yeah, they, you know, uh, part of... I, I'm feeling a little more sane in the second yeah, year, uh-huh. a little less reinventing the wheel. I say that now, and, and you know, catch check in with me here in a few months. <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying myself, even though it's incredibly busy, um, and uh, building upon things that I've been able to do in the last year and a half, uh, not to mention 30 years before that. But it's I'm feeling a little more calm. I'm, we're having fun, and the choir is really been revving up pretty well and the choir is having cathedral choir that's there every week is having a lot of fun that's good. and then the archdiocesan stuff um with you know the expanded archdiocesan choir is um is is you know it's, it's intense but it's fun so yeah. uh the word fun keeps coming up and it's and important it's, though if you, you have it, to have fun or else you know you, you, then you'd be a miserable cathedral musician well yeah you you, you know the, the we're hoping it to be a joyful place, and we're hoping that, I mean, even though we're working very hard and it's, and it's intense, sure. and, and I can get very intense in some of the warm-ups and rehearsals, and I just remind folks, you know, don't read into that. This is me just looking at the clock. <laughs> we got to get right. this stuff done. Sure. But you're going to have fun whether you like it or not, and we hope that that joy uh, translates. We hope it translates. Oh, what a we, great uh, attitude. Yeah. Richard, <laughs> we're open. We're trying. <laughs> so, are you part? Are you part archdiocesan as well? Or are you fully cathedral musician? Yeah, it's part archdiocesan. It's uh-huh. it's it's a bit it's a bit global. But you know, I'm my most of my day to day stuff is with the cathedral. But um, you know, there's there's you know extended uh, involvement with the archdiocese, and, and in a way, I've been involved with archdiocesan liturgical projects for, sure. for a few years now. Actually, yeah. even before you know, even unofficially, even before I came here so right and there's been a few projects in the work that i've you know trying to help out with but it's um you know it's not not so much there for credit but just to um advise and you know it, it takes on different capacities whether people are hiring new musicians or new policies on dealing with masses and you know in different situations um on and on whatever whatever various elements come up and then of course um the Archdiocese Choir is, you know, goes beyond, you know, reaches in from, you know, musicians all over the Archdiocese. I've had about about a hundred different singers wow. sing at different <laughs> points in the first year alone, which mm-hmm. really um, kind of exceeded my expectations. Yeah. How many people so, does your choir loft uh, seat for choir? Good question. <laughs> uh, a lot. Uh, Seventy, maybe. 70. Good number, mm-hmm. fifty easily, pretty easily, sure. sixty, seventy. Yeah, it could definitely fit quite a quite a number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you recently, a few months ago, had your uh, organ uh, rededication, and that's exciting. So the organ is all up and going again, and um, you've had concerts, and you have a concert series now, a full blown. Yes, and we've had a few. We have one coming up February twenty third. Jeremy Bruns, who's oh, yeah. the associate director of music at. Uh, the Church of the Advent, who is phenomenal, fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> February 23rd is a special date at the cathedral. It's um, the anniversary of the dedication of 
of the or the pipe organ. The pipe organ there, what's so fascinating is it's original to the building, and it is almost entirely, with one very tiny exception, every stop except for one is a, is original hmm. design from 1875, and the organ was dedicated February 23rd, 1876. Uh-huh. The, the cathedral building was dedicated on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, 1875. Wow. So uh, December 8th, 1875. And... So, you know, of course, <clears throat> you have an instrument that's 101 ranks, 70 stops, 5,000, depending on where you read, it's either 5,300 or 5,500 pipes, well over 5,000 pipes. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you have to protect it during a restoration, during a renovation of a building. Of you've, you've been through that. <laughs> You're familiar with that over at St. Patrick's. Just take it out. <laughs> where, yeah, you have to remove an awful lot of it. You have to protect it from dust. I, I try to I try to explain it this way. If you go to you know Symphony Hall, you go to you know Carnegie Hall, and you, and you go up to the trumpet player and you start you know blowing dust and pouring dirt inside his the bell of his instrument, he's not going to be too happy. He's yeah. going to have a hard time playing. Right. Or and if you, you take do it, you yeah. do that to thousands of pipes <laughs> on a pipe organ. Now you're you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, if not you know hundred thousand dollars of, of problems. Right. So it's it's really really critical to protect these instruments. So. It hadn't been played for about two years. Uh, there were a few few stops were cleaned, and um, not a whole lot was was done because so much of what had been done to it to restore it uh, to the current current condition was done by my predecessor Leo Abbott, mm -hmm. who deserves all the credit with that. Sure. And it was only fitting that he would rededicate the organ, uh, which he did on September fifteenth, which uh, was timed uh, for the to be near the titular feast of the cathedral. The uh, the Holy solemnity Cross, of the Holy right. Cross, which uh -huh. is September 14th, so yeah. we did it then. Uh, he's the reason that instrument uh, is heard at all. That's true. Um, when you, I know you've had Leo on the show before too, and and uh, he's when he started, uh, probably I think it was 1986. The instrument really was unplayable, oh. and I, I even have a choir member right now who. Play the organ in the 70s while he was in the seminary. He ended up not being ordained, but uh -huh. he was in the seminary and he played for I think it was I think it was Cardinal Madaris's uh, installation, I believe, if I have that right. Um, and the organ was kind of a mess, yeah. you know. And then when Pope John Paul II visited in 1979, they did their best to kind of get it to make a, a few sounds, <laughs> um, oh. but it was pretty much dead. Mm -hmm. And little by little. Uh, Leo made sure that you know he he raised money. He had people, he had friends come over. They would had what he called pipe cleaning parties. Yeah, if there is such a thing, you know. <laughs> and I have friends who can tell me about this. They could tell you about it. And um, That's they a good idea, actually. had <laughs> trays of pipes down in the basement, clean. You know, doing what you could on sure. site. A lot of stuff you have to really do off site, like reeds. But doing whatever you could just on a shoestring budget, you know, and raising money little by little. He started the Oregon Restoration Fund. Yeah. Named after his father, Arthur Abbott. Aww. In 1987, he started that fund. So within a, within a year, he started that fund. That fund still exists. We're still contributing to that fund, which keeps the maintenance going. And, um, you know, more and more of the instrument was playable. I think I first had the opportunity to play it. I'm trying to remember what year it was. might have been around 2000 or so. Mm -hmm. Leo uh, is fantastically supportive of his colleagues. He would invite, you know, a couple of times a year, uh, his his friends and colleagues to play on all these some of these fundraising sure. concerts and and the good the good news was that we all got a chance to be familiar with the instrument to be invested in it but I also got to see over the years I was down the block a mile mile down the block at Saint Cecilia Parish for all that time and I could note and mark the improvement the steady improvement mm -hmm. steady restoration uh, I think the fun part for a while we had this. Uh, there was a the console was an old theater console they probably put in in the 1920s yeah. I'm guessing uh -huh. the the console was electrified in the 20s it was a tracker of course um, and I'm, I'm guessing that's that was the console there and it had no pistons so you've got 101 you know one <laughs> ranks no pistons everything's yeah. done by hand you know we joke okay you have two assistants all right I need you to take your arm yes and take your whole arm and push these down I take your whole arm here and push them back up right I call it registration by qubits. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there was that reality for a bit, and then because of the historic uh, nature of the instrument, uh, he was able to get a matching grant 
uh, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, raised a few hundred thousand dollars to get a new console in, which is new technology, 21st century technology, but uh, was essentially visually a replica of the console in 1875. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was built by the Andover Organ Company. Uh, they've done fantastic work. The Andover Organ Company is probably one of the major authorities on these these uh, old hook organs. So, right. um, and again, I mentioned uh, the the instrument was made by E and G G Hook and Hastings. Uh-huh. Uh, Opus 801. We affectionately refer to it just as 801. 801. And it's a lot easier to just say 801 than it is to say E and G G Hook and Hastings. Uh-huh. Uh, so you just hear the number thrown around 801, 801, and we just assume the whole world knows what the heck we're talking about. Now I understand Leo Abbott's email address. So I got it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It, it is. It is. Uh, it's a term of endearment, 801, and, and it's a. Uh, uh, it's a number of significance yeah. <laughs> for us. So, yeah. uh, you know, later generations uh, of that company was just Hook and Hastings, mm-hmm. um, but the earlier ones. There's a number of these instruments in in the Massachusetts area, which are, some of them date to, to the Civil War, pre-Civil War, yeah. and there's a few of them still playing, sure. and it's been very tragic. A few have burnt down yeah. in, in recent years because you think it's of how loss. old these organs yeah. are. They're in these very old buildings, mm-hmm. probably with terrible electrical systems, and, mm-hmm. you know, the same could have happened <laughs> here. So yeah. um, they're they're very unique, um, not only unique, but the just the richness of harmonic yeah. Uh, no harmonic richness over the overtones the, the whole on, on each organ, stop yeah. is is really really quite fascinating. Yeah, Richard, let's uh, listen to a little bit right now yeah. so that those who are maybe not organists can get a sense of what you're talking about. Sure. Um, let's play a little bit of Leo since we've been talking about him. Yeah. Um, his chorale number three in A minor of Cesar yeah. Franck, a wonderful Fantastic. piece. Uh, we, we're not going to be able to hear the whole thing, but we'll sure. listen to a little no, bit. This is on the. Piece. 801, the Hook and Hastings at the Cathedral in Boston. This is the rededication concert, live performance.
go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. one of Richard's uh, communion antiphons for feasts and solemnities, which we just celebrated yesterday. So I, I assume you used that yesterday, right, Richard? We did. Uh, <laughs> we did use that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the text from the uh, from the Roman Missal. Yep. Uh, that recording is directed by Paul French. That's the official World Library Publications uh, okay. recording. They do a wonderful job. There's a lot more verses to it. Uh, it's the Canticle of Simeon and uh, uh we we always are singing um, the antiphons, uh, always a communion, whether whether they're in English or from the Graduale Romanum. Sure. Uh, and we all sing the Gregorian introits almost almost every single week uh-huh. Good as for you. well. In addition, so you know that's that's a the antiphons are a big big part of of what we're doing to make sure that people have that understanding of the Catholic identity at the cathedral and right. for archdiocesan events as well. We're always singing all these at archdiocesan events, the right. introits and the communios and, you know, off yeah. tour as well when we, when we can. <laughs> yeah. And Richard Clark is our guest today. And we just played his uh, communion antiphon for the presentation of the Lord, which was yesterday as we're recording on Monday. Uh, Richard is the uh, director of music and organist at the Holy Cross Cathedral in Boston. And Richard, how can people get the score and recording uh, if they're interested in your uh <clears throat> Antiphons. Yeah. So, uh, well, what's interesting uh, is you know the the publishing world has been rocked a little bit. That's right. <laughs> where uh, GIA uh, publications, one of the largest uh, publishers, took over one of the other, bought out one of the other largest publishers, World Library Publications. Yeah. So all this was with World Library Publications. You can now find that with the GIA, and they are in transition. I do have it up. Uh, some links up on my website. Uh, RJC Cecilia Music, which will link to the new GIA links. Um, they had been available as PDF. They they will be available as PDF. That's <laughs> they're still working on that. But uh, you can call uh. you can call GIA uh, uh, for and 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 I'm sure they'll they'll be able to provide a PDF uh, version if if that is also what what folks are looking for. I have a few sample recordings also on my website uh-huh. on uh, RJC Cecilia Music. So dot com uh, or dot org? Sorry? Dot com. Uh, <clears throat> dot com. Dot com, yeah. Yes. So check Cecilia it out. Cecilia as in the patron saint of music. That's right. And the your Caroline former parish. Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> I also have, uh, you can also listen to that entire recording. I also posted on my website as well. Uh-huh. A few, and I've got, I'm going to be posting more as, as it comes. Um, you can hear that entire performance of Leo Abbott performing the Franck uh, Chorale in sure. A minor. Uh, sounds great. And what you heard, what was so great to hear in that, are the fiery reeds. Yeah. Uh, the great reeds at 16, 8, and 4, three independent stops, were actually made by Henri Zimmerman in Paris. Hmm. And, uh, you know, in 1875, this was the largest organ built by an American builder. Mm-hmm. There was also the Volcker organ, that, which is now at the Methuen Music Hall, which is a little slightly larger. Uh, that... Uh, was was around, but this was this is a really it was the first time anyone had built.
build something in America in a building this large. Yeah. Uh, so there has been an experiment, and it, and it led to some really interesting things. You know, the the great manual is almost like a whole organ into itself, the number of colors, and it's almost like a, a solo division on top of a great manual as well. And, and um, you know, there's reeds all over the organ, which you heard in that recording. You hear just the, the richness of the reeds, and they're all um, they're all independent. Every single stop on that organ is independent. So. Uh-huh. So it's it's that's a lot of fun, but that's that was great to hear. And the also the the acoustic has been transformed. There was a lot of carpeting for yeah, decades, you yeah. could dare say generations. Uh-huh. It's a sea of carpeting. It used to be green, then it was red, <laughs> <laughs> and it looked lovely. But if, boy, it was it was hard to make music in there. Sure, uh, everything was completely replaced by stone and gra- and marble. Nice stone and marble, and we're up to five seconds of reverb. It's not just the reverb time; it's that it fills fills the room. The sound would kind mm-hmm. of die out from the choir loft. Now that you know the choir's diction can be heard. The diction is clear in the middle of of the nave, which is, or the front of the nave. And in fact, the sound almost picks up as you walk toward the altar. The sound starts to get reinforced and bounces off the apse, uh. off the reredos, and um, that's an interesting effect. This is a sound nobody has heard in generations. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. Someday. Yeah, and Leo Leo Abbott said, you know, this is a sound Mr. Hastings never heard. Yeah. And that, that is profound to think about that. That is, you could stay awake at night thinking about that one. So. Sure, of course. So I am, I am very much the beneficiary of this. I am the beneficiary of Leo's 30 years, decades of work on yeah. this. Uh-huh. So it's a, it's a big responsibility, and I, I'm profoundly grateful, but also we're going to make use and build upon build upon what the generations before, what Leo did and what these generations before did. Well, the, the right person is in the right place at the right time, and so I know you're... We're gonna, open. <laughs> We're I know open. you're going to take this uh, music department and, and, and continue to grow on the foundation that you've been given, so uh, I know you'll do great things. Yeah, and I'm fortunate to have some tools that that were not in place before, mm-hmm. which is, which is uh, not lost on me, and I remind everyone of that. I, I can do certain things now, which... We have more flexibility in the building. The building will be able to serve the people liturgically better. Mm-hmm. The the organ, this this fantastic organ, will be able to serve the people liturgically sure. and in their worship much better instead of being reserved perhaps for some concerts or for some special spots here uh-huh. and there. Uh-huh. Now it now it's going to do what it's what it's built to do. Yeah, let's yeah. listen to a little bit more of Leo. Uh, this is an underplayed piece, the Jesus Guridi. Uh, mm-hmm. El Buen yeah. Pastor, uh, the triptych. It's a three three part, but uh, we'll only listen to a little bit. And uh, uh, Guridi was in uh, Madrid. He was at the yeah. Church of San Manuel y Benito, and um, they uh, they have a great uh, week long festival, organ festival there at the church every May. You should play on it sometime. I'll, oh, I'd love to. I'm, yeah. I would. Uh, hmm. I'll see what I can do about that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, so, but this is El Buen Pastor and uh, Leo Abbott, wonderful musician and colleague, um, live performance on the rededication of the Hook and Hastings, the 801, uh, in Boston.
And that's a little bit of our guest today, Richard Clark's live performance of his own uh, Panje Lingua from the Gregorian Impressions on October 27 of this past year. And uh, good job, Richard. And you played that recently here at St. Patrick's Cathedral about a week or so ago. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I played it as a full suite of seven, right. um, just seven favorite Gregorian chants and um, had had the Scola sing them. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to do them together, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of fun to to do that on over at St. Patrick's and at, at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. There's so much color yeah. that you can get into. You know, uh-huh. you hear a bit of the clarinet there and the tenor and the, the rich strings and other colors come in, and it's just you can just play around with a, like having a palette with with all kinds of different things to draw from. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is published by whom again? And thank you for your copy that you sent to me. Yeah, it's published by Lorenz. Lorenz, uh, right. the, the Sacred Press. Lorenz is the is the overall. Uh, publisher and the sacred press is the division of that uh carson kuman was the editor um uh-huh. he's a fantastic uh supporter of new music yeah and, um so uh that's easy you can find the presentation just you know to google gregorian impressions clark and it pops right up so yeah. and lorenz it's easy to find great music and uh, of course it's your own music and it was really nice to hear the whole thing um the other week at st patrick so congratulations do you have a, a, a recording of that the whole thing? Yeah, the, the entire thing has been recorded. Uh, I did record it. Uh, actually, you can find it uh, on the Lorenz website. Okay, uh-huh. So they, they, I recorded it at St. Cecilia. It was one of the last things I recorded there. Sure. And, um, and it's interesting because I recorded it really right after I wrote them. Uh-huh. And I've had a little time to live with them. I'm like, all right, they're interesting. And things move along a little bit. There's a little more motion to some of them now. Yeah. Uh, but I've had more time to live with them mm-hmm. and kind of let them live and breathe. Um after a few performances really, really helps. So, yeah, but, but you can listen to that. And even, even on those recordings, I just draw from so many different colors, mm-hmm. um, on, on those chants, Gregorian chants. It's, it's so nice to, to build on the foundations of this is our Roman Catholic music and this is our traditions and bring it into the next century yeah. and make it, make it, you know, kind of accessible. Right. Hopefully. And you can hear it on the uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's archived, I believe, by now. Yes, uh, yes it is. St. Patrick's. Yeah, and you can hear all the Gregorian chants, each chant that it's yep. based on right before. Yeah, your pickup choir. <laughs> it's amazing. You yeah, just put, it was I, fun. I had a bunch of people come down from, <laughs> yeah, come down from Boston and got the word out. I had a few New York, New York friends being, I'm from Long Island, so, you know, I come right. back, I slip I slip right back into my Long Island accent. Uh-huh. And it's, we had fun, so... Yeah. Some, some really talented people. Yeah, so um, yeah. Uh, that's the Gregorian Impressions by Richard Clark, our guest today. Uh, and again, thanks for the uh, copy that you sent to me. And thanks for the yeah. T-shirts that you sent. I'm wearing it oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you all got them. I hope they fit. <laughs> yes, no, they're fine and uh, colorful. Uh, and uh, you said that Leo had these uh, pressed, printed. Leo made those. <laughs> he, we have, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff we have. Because you, you come to a concert, we've got the merch. we got the merch all lined up. Yeah. T-shirts, part of it. we got sweatshirts. we got coffee mugs. We Christmas got ornaments. Umbrellas. <laughs> what else? We have water bottles. we got bags. And anything you buy, it all goes to the Organ Restoration Fund. And we got to raise money for that. You know, as I was saying, as good as the instrument sounds, and it's all playing. It's playing today. It might not play tomorrow. You know, oh. there's there are things that the electrical is still uh, from the 1920s. And what year is it now? It's 2020. We got to look at that. Uh-huh. There's that's still right. so much. There's still all the pull down mechanisms from the tracker. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and it's working. But when the weather's dry, we got some issues on a few exactly. things. And there's there's we we really really the organ needs a true restoration of full seven figure restoration and mm-hmm. it's a miracle what Leo has done. It is fantastic. Yeah. Um as Leo said, you know, it, it was preserved, the instrument hasn't been messed with. And there's a few reasons. One was Hook and Hastings uh was the curator for other instruments, but the LaHaye's family sort of took over, you know, earlier in the century. There's several generations of, of organ builders there who took that over. That was one reason. The other reason was neglect, mm-hmm. the absolute abject neglect. And so as Leah will say, it's it's not from vision, it's from <laughs> you know, benign benign or not so benign neglect. Sure. Right, right, right. And but in a way it's a blessing. It's, it's a it's a real you know, we're kind of experiencing a renaissance right now, yeah. which is and we're really grateful for that. Right. Let's so. listen to a little bit since you mentioned Carson Kuman. Um didn't yeah. realize he was so young, I Googled him. Oh, uh, he's amazing. <laughs> And uh, so this is, uh, we'll play a little bit of a staccato. Yeah. I can't play the whole thing, but uh, this is um, uh, perf- uh, uh, composed in 2010 and performed live on October 27th of this yep. past year.
And that's a little bit of the uh, 2010 Takata of Cristiano Rizzotto, um, yeah, who also is a young young uh, composer. So yes, yeah, he he plays he's he's unbelievable. He he puts out recordings of all these wonderful new composers. Uh, and Carson is is himself a composer. Yeah. He's the he's the um, <clears throat> composer in residence at the Memorial Church at Harvard University, mm-hmm. and he's a very prolific composer. So he's a monster, monster musician, and a real gentleman and wonderful, wonderful colleague to have. I just had to have him play on. And and as you notice there's different performers. I'm continuing that tradition of having multiple performers. This was the 30th annual Cathedral Organ Benefit Concert. Wow. <laughs> and we had six, seven different people, and they are so much fun. I was so blessed to be part of those for years, and we got to continue that tradition. Sure. And Leo played on that. I had Leo back <laughs> playing on that. So, you know. And Leo's in uh, a lot. He's playing almost every week over there. Wow. You know, it's, his, it's his voice. Yeah. It's his instrument. I'm like, you tell me when you want to come in. You, I you thought go, he was retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to hold him down. You know, I just I just it's just great if he just gets out and performs. He's he's got to be out there concertizing more. Sure, I really yeah. Hope that for him. No, he's really great he's because he, you got to hear him. You know, he's he's got so much amazing repertoire going on. Now you have 150 years coming up uh, on that organ. That's a good uh, plug to try to get your We're, your your restoration going. Yes, very. Oh, I like that idea. I like that. We're at 144 years. The 144th birthday is coming up. Yeah. <clears throat> so yes, we need a seven-figure donor. That's yep. all I ask. So we need seven. Somebody figures might to be really redo the, the and share with St. Patrick's. <laughs> yeah, we've got the console is wonderful, but this you know clean five thousand something pipes. I've got plenty of plans to spend other people's money, <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, it really deserves it because um, you know it's kind of like you know finding that. Something frozen in the ice from ten thousand years right. ago. Like, wow, this tells us, but you know, but but the great thing about it is it's, it's serving the present, mm-hmm. and that's that's what's beautiful, and that's why it's deserving of of that because of the the new environment is, is so conducive. And it will serve the future as well. Yeah, yeah, we got we got to keep it going. Yeah, definitely, even long yeah. after you're gone. And hopefully yeah, you'll be there yeah. for if a very long this time. If I in reasonable shape, <laughs> then I've done my job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you're doing great things, and um, you're in your second year now. And gosh, uh, <laughs> so yeah. good for you. And you're in the right place at the Thank right you. time. And um, what are your plans for for? I mean, you're in your second year now. I know the first year is always the hardest, trying to figure out what's what, and especially in your situation yeah. where you're moving into a renovated building. Uh, what what uh, big plans do you have coming up? In a nutshell. <laughs> Big, uh, in general, or for the cathedral, I, you know, I, part of it, you know, we're building the program, and and I think there's there's a lot of long term stuff, you know. I mean, I I come into this, you know, God willing, I didn't come in here to be here for a couple of years. God willing, I'm here for several years. Sure, of course, well, I hope so. I'm I'm heading into it where I'm <clears throat> young enough to have the energy mm-hmm. uh, and old enough to have three decades of experience behind me. Right. We need a transept organ because the building is huge. The, uh-huh. the nave is is. A few feet longer than St. Patrick's, which everyone in New England likes to remind. I know to say. it's like a everybody in New England is going to remind you that we're just about ten <laughs> feet bigger, longer than yeah. you guys. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> but you know, we need a transept or pipe organ because you know there's there's um, so much uh, flex. I mean, we need we need the liturgical flexibility over overall. Mm-hmm. There's that's one aspect of it. Um, you know, building the choral program. I'd like to get. I'm trying to get more kids involved i'm sure, slowly getting some kids i've got a few really talented young young kids high school kids including your kids chant. some of them sang with us sang with us uh at st patrick's yeah and some of them are your own kids <laughs> yeah that's true yeah i kind of bring them along um but i had some, i have two other high school girls alfreda and alexandra who are just brilliant and they're they're, they're in high school and they're reading nooms wow. uh singing and laughing sight reading they cancer for me frequently, so I'm, I, I've, I've invited a lot of kids. I've had different kids involved with Archdiocesan events. I'm tr- trying to trying to build that up because, on the one hand, we're also the cathedral is also a parish. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 like two worlds. It's a place of extremes. You have the enormous. You have two thousand people. We had a, we had a ordination with thirteen priests, which is oh wow, that's amazing. Wonderful. Yeah, that's great. And we, we there are a few hundred, a couple hundred people. We can only. <laughs> Had a stand, you know. Yeah. You can seat two thousand if you bring in the flexible seating and all. Sure. That. Um, and then you know it, it's a parish that has. You can have other smaller events. Uh, there are four different languages on any given Sunday. You mm-hmm. have a Spanish community. We have the Latin Mass, the traditional Latin Mass. Mm-hmm. There's also the Ethiopian. Um, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, the Gies right. Yes. And. So any given Sunday, so this is sort of a little microcosm of yeah. four languages, three different rites, all in union with the church. 
Uh-huh. It's a little microcosm of the universality of the church. And bringing, you could easily be separate communities under one roof, but I'm getting more of a sense of unity and, and, and appreciation where at least you appreciate each other because we need to strengthen the cathedral parish. Right. Strengthen the cathedral parish, you'll strengthen the archdiocese. Sounds great, uh, Richard. Yeah. Um, you've got you've got a lot of work cut out for you, but we you're got a lot. you're already doing great things. So keep up the right. great work, and thanks for all you do for the church. And thank um, you. Yeah, so good talking to you. Yeah, nice talking to you too. And thanks for sharing your music and the uh, performances that have been happening there in the last few months. And I know we'll definitely have you again soon. Uh, we've been talking to Richard Clark from the Holy Cross Cathedral in Boston. And so, um, if you want to find out more about Richard and his music, go to rjccecilia.music.com and you can find out more there, get his music, etc. So thank you, Richard. And thank you. Th- uh, yes. i get you up to Boston to hang out. <laughs> okay, thank you. Play some music. Thank you, Connor. And uh, stay tuned next week for Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM 129. We'll finish out by his- listening to Psalm 139, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made by Richard Clark. <laughs>